as I uh, mentioned in the introduction, I'm the lone uh, speaker about cancer uh, in all these um, fantastic talks about um, pancreatitis. Anyway, I'm happy to give a, um, a slightly different perspective. So um, our work is mostly dealing with the uh, genetic susceptibility um, um, to, to pancreatic cancer um, and um, you know, on the germline level, of course. Um, so um, as a very brief introduction, because this is obviously a very educated um, um, uh, public, um, as you know, uh, pancreatic cancer is one of the worst cancers around uh, with, a, with a terrible um, five-year survival rate. Uh, not even 5% of, uh, of patients uh, live uh, to, to five years. Uh, in particular, we are talking about uh, doctor nodule carcinoma, which is by far the, the most uh, common um, subtype. We also know that uh, if pancreatic cancer is diagnosed early, uh, survival is significantly better. Still terrible, but, uh, but better than that. Uh, and therefore, uh, the, the, the obvious rationale for all these studies is if we understand risk factors for pancreatic cancer, maybe we have a better chance of identifying people at higher risk and that could lead to a, um, a better chance of uh, early diagnosis and therefore uh, it could translate into saved lives. So what do we know about pancreatic cancer risk factors? Um, not a lot. Uh, we certainly uh, have a, a handful of um, a, a lifestyle environment um, um, uh, risk factors that are established, uh, tobacco smoking, uh, obesity, diabetes, chronic pancreatitis, and uh, family history. It is uh, thought that between 3 and 10% of pancreatic cancers are uh, familiar. Um, what do we know more specifically about genetic factors? Uh, we know that uh, there are a number of um, rare mutations with high penetrance uh, that have been found in, in families uh, with recurrence of pancreatic <coughs> cancer. Um, most of them uh, don't have exclusively pancreatic cancer, so this is more uh, a part of the spectrum of, uh, of cancers that you find in families with uh, segregating mutations in, for example, BRCA, uh, BRC1, BRC2. Um, However, these are rare mutations. Uh, um, they, by themselves, they cannot explain the, the bulk of genetic susceptibility to uh, pancreatic cancer. So uh, our focus has been more to turn uh, to the common polymorphisms. Um, pink is pink one, that's the, what, what you is there? That's right, it should be the one that's, there. Which family is that? I, I'm not aware of many families. Um, this must be a single publication. I'm, um, I cannot remember exactly. Um, I, I should look it up. Um, yeah, as I was saying, these are all rare things, so we, we, we are more interested in the, in the common polymorphisms. Um, and how do we find them? Uh, certainly not studying families, but studying uh, sporadic cases with association studies. Um, so, uh, well, uh, obviously, uh, you're all aware of, about the, the big success uh, of genome-wide association studies that are, uh, so far at least, uh, focused on um, common polymorphisms. Uh, so this is a cartoon uh, dating back to last year that depicts uh, all the hits found in a number of diseases or other, uh, or other traits um, uh, through genome-wide association studies. It's several hundred. If you focus on, on cancer, it's also already a large number. Um, for, uh, there are hits basically for any, any type of, uh, of cancer. Um, so, what's the situation um, for uh, pancreatic cancer? Uh, well, uh, pancreatic cancer um, is still um, relatively underdeveloped um, in comparison with, with other uh, more common cancers. Um, there are not that many studies and, and clearly we cannot see yet a, practic a practical utility. Um, um, so. I would like to make a small digression and uh, illustrate a little bit what we know, what's the situation for more common cancers. This is a little bit to prevent or, or, or uh, a question that I'm uh, being asked very often, that is to say, what's it? how does this translate into, into clinical practice? What is this useful for? Uh, and all these polymorphism and all these associations with those ratios of 1.1, are they are useless. Um, so I think that um, if you look at cancers that are more intensively studied and more common, uh, you start seeing a little bit of uh, that useful, usefulness uh, emerging. So uh, a small digression about um, breast cancer. Um, so for breast cancer, there are lots of GWAS uh, out there and they're still going on. 
Uh, as of today, uh, uh, to my knowledge, there are uh, over 70 um, uh, loci, uh, convincingly associated, that means with uh, a, a level of uh, statistical uh, evidence uh, significant at the genome-wide level. Um, Together, they explain about, uh, the estimation is that they explain about 15% of the inherited component of, uh, uh, of disease risk. And more in detail, uh, well, we, we know about the uh, rare penetrance, rare high penetrance uh, mutations. We know about a second group of, uh, uh, of variants that are also rare or rarish with intermediate risk, and then there are uh, various groups of common polymorphisms, uh, individually all associated with common risk, uh, which, um, which explain a, a piece of the cake, uh, and there is still a lot uh, unexplained. So even this, uh, for breast cancer, which is intensively studied, is still, uh, with still more studies uh, ongoing, um, I'm, I'm marginally involved in, the, in, in one of these studies uh, where, uh, uh, the sample size is 120,000 cases and 120,000 controls. Um, and so we are still expecting to find a reasonable number of, of, of hits from there. Um, so uh, as you know, these hits are individually weak. The uh, relative risks are uh, usually in this, uh, in this order of magnitude. That means 10 to 30% increase or decrease uh, in risk. So we are extremely far from what we have seen so far with the risks of uh, 5, 10, 300. Um, so obviously, uh, individually, they don't tell you much. Uh, however, they are also frequent in the population. By definition, here we are looking at common polymorphism, minor relief frequencies ranging from 5 to 50 percent. Uh, and uh, estimations on the data that uh, are already out there uh, suggest strongly that there are still several hundred, maybe thousands, uh, of additional loci to, to be identified. So, as it often happens, uh, the, the picture is more complicated than what uh, one would expect at the, at the beginning. Um, um, but there is, there is some progress. So um, quickly, what do we do with this, uh, with this knowledge? Um, as I said, individually, these polymorphisms don't tell you much. Uh, so you should start combining them. So uh, this is the typical distribution of, um, um, of what you would see with one locus. Uh, then you keep adding them. For example, here with eight, and then if you extrapolate to what we uh, could find one day with hundreds or, or thousands of risk loci, then you would have a distribution of risk uh, that looks like a normal Gaussian uh, curve, uh, and is similar between cases and controls. It's just shifted towards higher uh, number of risk alleles for for the cases. And so, um, <clears throat> so. Um, when you do this exercise with the, with the 76 known loci that we know today for breast cancer, uh, the picture that emerge, emerges is, uh, is more or less like this. Um, you have a tail of the distribution, the lower tail of the distribution of the population has uh, roughly half uh, risk compared with the, with the average, and the, and, the, and the higher tail uh, has a roughly double uh, risk. Um, and so if you look at it in a, in a different way, uh, you take a 50-year woman and predict what her risk of developing a breast cancer is in the next uh, 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, here is uh, uh, the, the, the average. Uh, and then if you take the genetic information that we know about and you make a score and you stratify the population according to the score, uh, this is the, the picture that comes out. So if you look at the 10% of women with lowest risk, uh, uh, their risk, their lifetime risk basically is, is here, less than uh, 5%. And if you take the, the upper 10% uh, with, the, with the larger number of allele risks, of risk alleles, uh, uh, the risk is, is here between around 12%. And if you look at even smaller groups, uh, you obviously you look at the first and the 99th percentile, you, you see even more extreme. Uh, distributions. So this is what we know today about breast cancer with 76 polymorphism. And you, and you can calculate, there are even publications out there, that this could already today have an impact in uh, getting a better uh, screening. So for example, deciding who uh, should get a mammography, uh, how often, and, and so on. And, and it can be demonstrated that even with this limited knowledge, this could have an impact. Uh, so the idea is low risk, do not screen or start screening later in life. 
uh, high risk scream more intensively or start, and or start earlier in, in life. So, well, of course, this also depends on what disease you are studying. Uh, for breast cancer, there is effective screening. Pancreatic cancer is another story. Um, so, um, well, where are we? Um, then we, we are coming back to pancreatic cancer in, in a second. Uh, so this is prostate cancer. The situation is very similar to breast. Uh, in this cartoon that where you have, oops, where you have um, allele frequency here uh, plotted versus relative risk. So you have the, here you have the uh, rare uh, high risk. Uh, here you have the, the SNPs, basically. Um, not much in, the, in between. Um, this, is, um, this is the situation. Um, and for pancreatic cancer, at least uh, up to the uh, beginning of this year, what was published uh, was a group of, again, small uh, group of uh, rare mutations with, uh, with high relative risk and, and a small, really small group of, uh, of polymorphisms uh, with um, uh, frequent, frequent polymorphism in the, in the population with, uh, with a small uh, risk individual. Um, this is um, um, a summary of those polymorphisms uh, as of early this year. So there have been three genome-wide association studies, uh, one in uh, performing Caucasians, the so-called PANSCAN study, uh, one uh, performing Japanese and one performing Chinese, and you see that the, the distribution of the loci that uh, have been found. So um, in this context, we started out um, a few years back, um, and uh, we try to give our contribution to all this. So we establish a consortium, uh, and uh, the, the primary goal is to uh, contribute to the knowledge of uh, germline um, uh, susceptibility. Um, specifically, we want to ob obviously focus on pancreatic cancer, uh, ductal adenocarcinoma in the first place. Um, also, we have uh, an idea of uh, looking not only at susceptibility, but also at if and how um, <coughs> genetic factors uh, have an influence on response to therapy and survival more broadly of pancreatic cancer patients. Uh, and also, hopefully, try to have a, uh, um, an idea about the function of all these, uh, these loci. So this is what the uh, Pancreatic Disease Research, or Pandora Consortium, looks like today. Uh, we uh, have been reasonably successful in, in uh, recruiting a, a number of, of collaborators, starting locally from, from, from Heidelberg with the group of Professor Buchler, but then expanding uh, to, to many other collaborators. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, heavily centered in, in Europe with, uh, uh, with a lone group uh, collaborating in, in Japan. Uh, we've been collecting essentially um, germline DNA from blood in, in the vast majority of, uh, of cases. Um, and this is what we have in the biobank today. Um, so we have slightly over uh, 3,000 uh, samples of ductal adenocarcinomas, uh, obviously healthy controls recruited from the same areas, uh, much smaller numbers of other exocrines. For the time being, we are not doing anything with them. With those, with those numbers, obviously, uh, you can't do much, but we keep accumulating them. Um, and we have been more recently trying to collect also um, uh, samples of patients with uh, neuroendocrine tumors. These are obviously much rarer, but there is hardly anything in the literature about at least genetics. So we are hoping to now with this reasonable number to start uh, something soon. And also since uh, chronic pancreatitis is such an important risk factor for, uh, uh, for pancreatic cancer, we, we, we collected also um, uh, samples of those, uh, of those patients. Um, um, as I said, we, uh, we have also in mind of uh, looking not only at susceptibility, but also at uh, progno prognosis. So uh, we have been trying to collect uh, clinical uh, data. So this uh, shows uh, what we have uh, for a subset, a reasonably large subset of, uh, uh, of cases of the carcinomas in terms of survival. Um, so obviously, as you can uh, expect, the majority of them are, are, are dead. But anyway, we, we collect uh, data about the length of follow-up and, and the length of the, of the survival. So what have we done with this, um, uh, with this so far? Uh, at first, uh, while the, con the, the, uh, the consortium was still small, basically consisting only of Heidelberg and Liverpool, uh, the first study we've done was to very simply to try to confirm uh, <clears throat> the findings from the uh, genome-wide association studies. So we started replicating uh, the findings from, from PANSCAN. And to our uh, relief, we uh, managed to replicate uh, uh, several of them, uh, particularly uh, the, the most relevant ones, which are in the ABO and, and TERT uh, region. Um, 
Next, we try to replicate uh, the SNPs from the Asian um, uh, genome-wide association studies uh, in a slightly larger uh, sample size. Um, so there are eight uh, SNPs published uh, uh, out of those two studies. One of them is totally non-polymorphic in, in European, so we studied the other seven. Um, to our great disappointment, we couldn't replicate anything at all. Uh, they were totally flat. Um, why is that? Not easy to say. Um, it probably reflects, on one hand, allelic uh, uh, difference in, in, uh, differences in allelic frequencies. All of these polymorphisms are much rarer in Europeans than in Asians, so it could be simply a, a question of sample size and power. Uh, could also be, uh, at least part of the explanation, that um, uh, differences in linked disequilibrium structure between populations, and therefore uh, those um, uh, if you assume that these SNPs coming from the AGWAS um, are not causal SNPs but just markers, uh, they could be in different uh, situation of linkage equilibrium with the real causal SNPs uh, uh, between populations. So um, this is a possible, uh, these are possible explanations we can come up with, uh, come up for. Um, um, Right, we also uh, tried to have a look at uh, those SNPs in relation to survival. Um, uh, admittedly, the, the, the rationale is not terribly strong, but um, uh, since um, uh, in pancreatic cancer, incidence and, and, and mortality are almost equivalent, we, we thought um, uh, polymorphisms that are associated with, with the incidence, with risk, could also have uh, something to do with survival. We see a weak uh, association for one of those SNPs um, um, with a, a p-value that is not spectacular, but is, uh, is significant nevertheless. Um, so here is the Kaplan-Meier curve, which shows that there is a slight uh, difference uh, in, in survival if you are a carrier of the, of the minor allele. <clears throat> Um, quickly, um, we um, looked a little bit more in detail about uh, polymorphism of the ABO um, uh, locus on chromosome 9. This is the, actually the most consistent finding. It basically comes up in, in all uh, GWAS uh, studies. Um, and so uh, we, we, we studied um, six polymorphisms uh, that are functional polymorphisms. They actually determine the, the ABO blood groups. And just doing the genotyping, you can reconstruct the uh, the blood groups uh, and, and some subgroups. Um, and so um, we uh, confirmed what was also coming from the, um, coming out of the uh, GWAS that, he, that the A blood group is the one that is clearly associated with, with risk. Uh, we went uh, further to look in the subgroups of A, so there is A, um, A1 and, and A2. Um, and we have seen that the risk is basically um, uh, confined to A1, um, uh, where A2 seems to have little, if any, uh, effect. Um, and this, this fits also because uh, what we know about the function is that A1 is the fully functional form. Uh, A2 is sort of intermediate uh, if you compare with, with O, which is uh, completely defective and, and non-functional. Uh, so this seems to... Um, to fit well with the, with the biology. Uh, it's also one of the very few examples, to my knowledge at least, uh, uh, of hits coming out from cancer GWAS where these are very likely to be the actual functional uh, variants and not just some anonymous markers for, for something else that we don't know about. Um, it's still very difficult to understand what the function, uh, how this could uh, functionally relate to mechanism of development of the, of the disease, but at least uh, we have a good hint that those are the, uh, the SNPs that one should look at. Okay, then more recent developments, um, maybe more exciting than, than those previous studies. Uh, we are trying also to um, be involved in, in new GWAS, as I try to uh, illustrate with the breast cancer example. Uh, the more GWAS you do, the more you you keep finding, and therefore I think that there is uh, a good rationale to, uh, to, to go on uh, with this for a while. Uh, so um, uh, the PANSCAN group, which is uh, led by the National Cancer Institute in the United States, uh, has been recently doing a, a new round um, of, of GWAS. Um, so as often, these studies uh, are done in, uh, in multiple stages. Uh, so in the first uh, stage, uh, about 1,600 cases and 5,000 controls um, have been Actually, actually genotyped with, uh, uh, with the commercial array by Illumina that, um, that has about 700,000 polymorphisms. Uh, we managed to uh, also include about 200 of our 
cases uh, in this series, then um, the results have been, um, well, have gone through imputation of uh, non-genotype SNPs, and uh, they have been meta-analyzed uh, with um, the data from the previous uh, two rounds of PANSCAN. Um, and then um, <clears throat> uh, the statistical analysis is done. The SNPs are, all the SNPs in the genome are, are ranked according to the strength of the association um, or, or, or the p-value of the association. Um, and then uh, there is additional replication. So here the, the main group uh, that was used for replication of the study is our samples, Pandora. We contributed 2,000 cases and, um, and over 4, uh, 4,700 controls. Um, so for uh, a total of, well, the total here starts being pretty, pretty large, uh, not really comparable with breast or prostate, but, uh, but we, are, we start talking about uh, respectable sample sizes here. Um, and so this, is, this illustrates um, the so-called Manhattan plot. Probably many of you are familiar with this. It shows uh, here the different polymorphism according to physical position on the chromosome. So each different color is a chromosome. And here is the strength of the uh, association or rather uh, the p-value. So it's to be precise the minus logarithm of the p-value. So the, the higher, the stronger uh, the association and the smaller the p-value. Uh, so one usually uh, draws the line somewhere here uh, at 10 to the minus, uh, at, at five by 10 to the minus eight, which is uh, conventionally used as, uh, as threshold for declaring genome-wide um, significance. And so as you can see uh, here, we, there, there are five uh, regions that very clearly, five peaks that very clearly uh, are associated. Um, so in this study, we found uh, these this five new, uh, new regions. Um, there's more coming. Um, so there is another group also based in, uh, in the United States called PANSI4. It's another consortium. Um, again, mostly um, collecting Caucasian um, cases and controls. Uh, so again, same process basically. Uh, they have been doing uh, additional uh, genotyping uh, in, in a bunch of cases and controls. Um, uh, meta-analysis with uh, pre-existing data, and then finally uh, replication in, in our samples. So for this one, we, we got 20, 28 um, promising hits um, using a, a threshold of uh, 10 to the minus fifth. Um, and uh, again, uh, fairly large sample size, uh, and the results are just coming out. The manuscript has been submitted uh, a couple of days ago, I believe. Um, so um, with all of this, with these new, um, well, this should say uh, PANSCAN and PANSI4 uh, GWAS, with these two new GWAS, um, we have uh, been quite successful because basically we have doubled, uh, so you see here, Mark, the, the new ones, uh, doubled the number of known susceptibility loci. So this, in, this shows the loci uh, that are either uh, completely um, significant, meaning that uh, the association exceeds uh, five by 10 to the minus eight, um, or that are very close to that and, and are very promising. Um, so this has been uh, quite a success. Um, we, are, we are quite pleased. Uh, with that. Um, right, maybe a couple of words about uh, hints about function. Um, this should be uh, taken with, with, with a lot of caution because, of course, uh, as you know, when you're trying to infer function of uh, GWAS results, uh, you're speculating a lot uh, because in most of the cases, uh, you, you clearly don't have a clue, <laughs> to say frankly. Um, ABO is, is the lone exception. Uh, and usually what you can do is just look at the genes that are nearby, if there are any, because very often these are, uh, are, are uh, mapping to gene deserts, uh, so where there's nothing around. Uh, but uh, sometimes you do. Um, so you do have uh, nearby genes that by their function could be, could be relevant. Well, I already mentioned ABO. Uh, here we, we, we really don't know what, uh, what the function is, but interestingly, there are other um, uh, papers, uh, other studies that independently have reported uh, that the polymorphism that are associated in this locus that are associated with um, susceptibility to pancreatic cancer also uh, are associated with circulating level of uh, TNF alpha, so a possible link with, um, uh, with inflammation, and with ICAM1, so a possible link with cell adhesion, which are obviously uh, important mechanisms in, in, in cancerogenesis in, in, in general. 
Um, another one that I want to mention is TERT um, on chromosome 5. Uh, so this is the locus of, uh, um, that encodes for the, uh, the protein uh, part of the telomerase uh, gene. Um, it's a very interesting region. Uh, it's a so-called pleiotropic heat, meaning that it's, um, uh, there are polymorphisms in this region that are associated with the number of, uh, of um, other cancer types, not only pancreas. And even for pancreas, a little bit puzzling, but, uh, but this seems to be very solid. And uh, there are three independent heats. So one was coming out of um, uh, PANSCAN1, uh, another one is coming out of uh, PANSCAN3, uh, and then a third one is coming out of a study that we have done just in, in Pandora uh, and that we are trying to, to get published right now. So uh, they seem to be independent. There is very little linkage equilibrium between these three SNPs. Uh, they seem to be all convincingly associated with, the, with risk. Um, of course, we have no clue about, about the function, and, and this is very puzzling, but this is a, such, a, such a hot region, I think there will be a, a need for a lot of additional work uh, here. Um, then, um, this is much more vague, uh, but you can observe that a few of these GWATS heats are located near genes involved in diabetes, glycemia, uh, and, and, and obesity. This obviously make, uh, makes a lot of sense, um, considering this is pancreas. Uh, but as I say, this is very vague, and this is just based on physical proximity. It doesn't really imply much in terms of, uh, of function. And additionally, other uh, hits map near genes involved in DNA repair, particularly double strand break repair. And this uh, seems potentially interesting, because we know that, um, uh, that uh, pancreatic cancer shows up in families, for example, with BRCA2 mutation. <coughs> Um, a subproduct of these GWAS studies that you can, uh, a sub, an analysis that you can do is you can estimate uh, what is the overall contribution from the whole set of common SNPs uh, to heritability. And so the latest estimate based on the, on the PANSI4 GWAS uh, data is that um, uh, about 15% of pancreatic cancer heritability is attributable to frequent SNPs. Uh, and uh, only 2.9%, so about 20% of that, is explained by the 30-odd uh, loci that, uh, that we know today. Um, so, well, the conclusion is obviously that there are lots more to find, and here we are talking only of common SNPs. Um, uh, then when we are done with those, um, there are all the rare variants that are waiting for us um, and will keep us busy for, uh, for a long, long time. So, there is certainly, uh, I'm, I'm a big uh, believer that, uh, that the GGYS era is, is far from being finished. Uh, there is more uh, work to do. Uh, as a matter of fact, the next uh, step that is already planned is to uh, meta-analyze uh, all the uh, results of the existing GWAS. Um, for sure, uh, PANSCAN and, and PANSI4, probably also the Asian uh, GWASs. There is negotiation ongoing right, right now. Um, so um, all these results can be put together in, in a meta-analysis that obviously will yield additional candidate SNPs, uh, and, uh, and we are already agreeing with the, uh, with the American colleagues that we will use like, once more Pandora for, uh, for replication. So hopefully this should lead to uh, another uh, bunch of, uh, of uh, confirmed hits. Uh, so this will probably take place in, in 2015. Okay. Um, so um, all this um, tries to go back to uh, the, the more general strategy of, and, 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 and we are trying to put this in the, in the perspective of what we are going to use this for. Uh, so the idea is trying to have a better modeling of the risk factors, uh, and this obviously involves uh, uh, known uh, environmental lifestyle risk factors such as smoking, family history information, and then whatever we can find out of the uh, genetic studies. Um, the purpose of this, or one of the purposes, is obviously to define, have a better tool to define high-risk subjects in the, in the population, so concentrating this tail of the population. Um, and then all this goes on with, with screening, so again, for pancreatic cancer, we don't have a well, the, the situation is much less uh, developed than for other uh, cancers. There are uh, tools that, such as uh, CA99, that, are, uh, that have very low um, accuracy. Um, endoscopy is obviously much better, but you cannot screen the whole population for 
uh, for, for, for pancreatic lesions with this. Uh, there are things that are being developed, such as proteomic markers, uh, um, um, tumor DNA uh, mutations, uh, metabolomic markers that hold some promise. So, uh, well, we are concentrating on this side, and other people uh, are concentrating on this other, which is equally important, and, and hopefully this all should uh, lead um, to um, better early diagnosis and hopefully more lives uh, saved. Okay, in the interest of time, I will skip through the other part uh, about, uh, I could stay here boring you for hours, um, skip through the survival part, um, and just say a couple of words about what we're planning to do. Obviously, uh, we want to keep expanding con the consortium, so I've shown you at the beginning the, the map of what we have there. Hopefully, we will have a few more dots in the recent future, maybe, maybe in Hungary, um, probably. Um, um, we also think that it's important to uh, do these studies not only in the Caucasians, but also in other ethnic groups, and that's why we are also uh, trying to push hard to uh, get more collaborations in Asia, for example. Um, certainly, at some point, we want to do our own GWAS uh, so that we can uh, better contribute to, uh, to the whole field. Um, and uh, as I said, um, at some point, we want to establish a multifactorial risk score and evaluate its performance in predicting risk of pancreatic cancer. Um, we also want to do some work about the other entities that we, are, we have been collecting. Uh, so far, we haven't really done much, uh, but, uh, but the numbers are growing, particularly for um, endocrine cancers and, and chronic pancreatitis. So we're hoping to do uh, something, and certainly we are very open to collaboration. Um, um, and um, another thing that I want to do, uh, we have not really done this on purpose systematically, is to collect, start collecting also um, tumor material so that we could study somatic events such as gene mutations, gene expression, <coughs> methylation, all sorts of somatic events, and then we could try to hopefully correlate those with, uh, with the genetic polymorphism. Uh, and the last thing that I need to do is to acknowledge the long, long uh, series and large number of, uh, of collaborators. And thank you very much for your collaboration, for your attention. <laughs> thank you very much for the summary of this huge collaborative work. Uh, any questions from the audience, please? Yes. Are you using any complementary approaches besides just bigger, bigger GWASs? Um, well, uh, this is a very good, uh, good question, a very good suggestion. Um, uh, as I said, I strongly believe we, could, we should keep doing GWASs, but we should also get uh, better uh, ways of mining the existing and the future uh, GWAS data. Um, <laughs> So, uh, for example, something that has been already attempted, and certainly we want to redo that, is uh, pathway analysis. Um, so this has been done uh, in the context of PANSCAN 1, and it has shown some interesting results. Uh, it would make more sense to redo it with a much larger series that will be available uh, very soon. So the idea here is pathway analysis is to um, uh, lump uh, to map all the polymorphisms to, uh, to the nearby genes and then lump the information, uh, analyze uh, not only one polymorphism at a time, but all the polymorphisms belonging to a gene, and then you can further go on and analyze separately, analyze all the polymorphisms belonging to given pathway, pathway by pathway, and then try to come up with an estimation of whether a whole gene or a whole pathway uh, has uh, some sort of association. So that, that's one possibility. Um, Another thing that, uh, um, um, along the same lines, that is to say to prioritize uh, information about polymorphism, so instead of treating them as in a totally agnostic way, uh, one can try to prioritize that information, so Python analysis is one way, but there are nowadays a, a, a large number of uh, bioinformatics tools, for example, uh, to do that. And so you can predict what SNPs, for example, this I think is extremely interesting, uh, what SNPs are EQTLs, so associated with uh, levels of gene uh, expression, uh, and those are a very interesting category. They have been already shown to be um, enriched in results of, of GWAS. Um, and then the other thing that I think uh, has potential uh, is, as I said at the, begin uh, at the end, uh, to look in parallel at uh, somatic events and, and try to see if there is a correlation. But obviously for that you need very, very large sample size, much bigger than just a plain GWAS. Yes? So, so the last question. Let, let me be just 
critical a little bit. Sure. Don't you find that for the investment you make here, that that's very, very small return? And, and I know that funding agencies don't dare not to fund this because it's cancer-related. I mean, if uh, you take chronic pancreatitis and you try to apply for grants for this kind of studies, you never get a single penny. Because they, they're going to voice all the criticism right. you try to you know, avoid with the breast cancer example. Right. Um, no, no, this is a perfectly legitimate question, uh, a question that I get often. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, um, the uh, uh, trust of the funding agency starts to decline a little bit also for, for cancer GWASs, but okay, you still get, manage to, 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 to get some money for, for, for that. Um, yeah, it's undeniably, it's a large, uh, it's a large investment. Um, so far, um, we don't have much to show in, term, in terms of translational uh, applications. Uh, I concede that. Although, as I tried to demonstrate at the beginning, uh, when you look at uh, other sites that have more research done, you start already now seeing a potential uh, for, for example, beta screening. Um, but breast cancer is not a great example because that's at least tenfold more prevalent, right? Right. So now you get into this, uh, this problem. If, if you show a twofold change for pancreatic cancer, it's not the same as for breast cancer. So it may change screening for breast cancer, but you may not get there for pancreatic. Uh, it's a twofold change today. Um, you can you believe it's also calculate it? that if you get to have a few hundred uh, loci, of course, there is a diminishing return. So the, 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 the loci that you find are smaller and smaller in, in effect. But anyway, you can demonstrate that with a larger number of loci, uh, you can extrapolate that you, the risk will be probably maybe in the order of fourfold, uh, which I think That's starts more, being more quite, quite interesting. Uh, so uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a gamble, and certainly uh, it's a lot of taxpayers' money that goes into that, but I personally believe it's, it's, it's worth it.